The United States Air Force and the government agency that funds the F-22 program are at odds over the fate of the F-22 Raptor. The Air Force intends to retire the planes in order to make room in the budget for the replacement, the next-generation Air Dominance NG-80 fighter. Congress, however, is hesitant of retiring the world's first fifth-generation fighter jet too soon after funding planes that face substantial production delays. Currently, the Air Force has 185 F-22 Raptors. One little-known truth about the F-22 is that just 123 of them are in the primary mission aircraft inventory, which means they can really fight. The remaining F-22 fighters serve as training, development, and backup aircraft and are physically incapable of engaging in air combat. Most F-22s are less than 16 years old, but the plane has been in development since the 1980s as a part of the Advanced Tactical Fighter Program. This means that a lot of the way the jet is made is based on ideas from the Cold War. The F-22 was designed to fight Soviet and Warsaw Pact fighters at medium ranges from well-established bases in Western Europe. It was made to be the best at what it does, but it wasn't made, for example, to work at very long distances. Forty years later, the business world has changed a lot. Once the only country with stealth fighters of the fifth generation, the U.S. now has to compete with Russia's Su-57 Felon and China's J-20 and FC-31 fighters. Planners in the air now have to think about how to operate in the huge Asia-Pacific theater, where fighter jets may have to fly a thousand miles or more just to fight enemy fighters. Because of how much competition there is and how the world has changed, a new plane is needed. The next-generation air dominance plane will incorporate the latest in stealth technology, but also just as importantly, the ability to fly very long distances and a maximum speed of Mach 2.8, that is 3,500 km per hour. Developed, built and flown in just one year in 2020, the aircraft still has yet to be revealed. It will be extremely expensive, however, with Air Force Secretary Frank Candle warning earlier this year that each fighter will cost multiple hundreds of millions of dollars. According to Air Force Times, the service wants to retire 33 of the oldest combat-capable planes, known as Block 20, as a part of its 2023 defense budget request. Retiring them would not only save money on operating costs, it would also save the $50 million each it would cost to upgrade them to modern standards. The Air Force would then funnel the savings into next-generation air dominance development. Although a prototype next-generation air dominance fighter has already flown, the aircraft is not scheduled to begin replacing the F-22 until 2030. The Air Force might diverse most of its F-22s before the next-generation air dominance can be deployed in useful numbers, just when Russia's and China's fifth-generation fighter fleets will likely grow. Russia's cratering economy, a direct result of its invasion of Ukraine, might change that. Congress is wary of allowing the Air Force to retire the F-22 early, especially after the F-35A was several years late and billions of dollars over budget. If next-generation air dominance runs into similar headwinds, Congress worries there could be a capability gap in which the Air Force lacks credible F-22 replacement. The next-generation air dominance fighter and any unmanned fighter jets that fly alongside it will likely preserve American air superiority to 2050 and beyond. The concern is it could suck all the oxygen out of the room before it arrives or even if it arrives on time. The Air Force seems to believe the risk is manageable, but Congress isn't so sure. Perhaps if next-generation air dominance went public, Congress would be better willing to justify funding the existing fleet of Raptors and buying $200 to $300 million future fighter plane. Well, that's it from the buzz for today. Thank you guys for viewing in. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.